Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practices Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barrett, and I'm going to keep bringing it, if you keep showing up, with the best thinkers in all of dentistry. And today, we do exactly that with Dr. Christian Coachman, who's become a great friend of mine. I've watched what he's done to this world of dentistry, and he is truly changing the world of dentistry with his DSD concepts. And today we talk about the modern comprehensive mindset. It's one of my favorite of how to think and what happens when you really start to change your practice in a better way. And he puts the two pillars together of what you need to do. So please listen to the episode. One more thought. We're getting him to come to Milwaukee for an exclusive engagement in April of 2023. And he's going to do a DSD day and you can see it firsthand join us. You're going to absolutely love it. It's almost sold out, but if you register today, and I'll even give you $100 off if you use the code CC100. Again, CC100, you get $100 off, and you can see the man do his entire DSD day program here in our training center. Don't miss out. So make sure you guys listen to the episode. I know you're going to love it. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. I am super, super pumped you are here. And uh, you're going to see why in just a second, because I've got one of the greatest influencers in all of dentistry. He's become a friend of mine, and I've watched him do what he does, and it's amazing. And his name is Dr. Christian Coachman. And today we're going to be talking about the modern comprehensive mindset from treatment planning to business with Dr. Christian Coachman. Christian, thanks for being on, brother. I appreciate it. Fantastic to be back. Um, we've been together here, me interviewing you, you interviewing me. It's always so much fun, and uh, it always helps me to organize my thoughts when I'm trying to explain my ideas to you. You are the best person to make the smartest questions and to make us organize our thoughts in the best way. So I hope we're going to share some cool ideas with everybody. Yeah. Well, those are really kind thoughts and uh, I'm glad I'm doing something purposeful in this world, but I love, I love this stuff. And in full transparency, I'm just a CE junkie, just like everybody else. I love the CE. My wife thinks I have, I should see a therapist because she's like, you can sit in these courses all day long. I go, I can, I just love it. And we should uh, all be a therapist. <laughs> we should. We should. And uh, now I'm extra excited today because obviously we've got you in one of your limited engagements where you're going to come to the United States and you're going to present at our uh, state of the art training center here in Milwaukee in April, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But what's bigger than that is that you've created this DSD concept, which we'll talk about. But what's even more important than that is how you help dentists think. And Christian, I was sharing this story with you. I had a dentist in here and he has a three doctor practice. He's like, I have a new dentist. Like, would, would this, I'm like, yes, it's the important mindset that will help carry these dentists to a bigger, better way of thinking. So let's talk about the why. Well, first of all, first let's start here. I want to start here. I got ahead of myself. I have a lot of new young listeners. I've got some dental students listening now. I want them to know who Christian Coachman is. So who is Christian Coachman? What do you do? (laughs) <laughs> okay, I, I used to be a dentist. I used to be a dental technician. Uh, I was a dental technician for 20 years. Um, through my dental technician work as a ceramist, handmade, old school ceramist, I was able to travel the whole world and I'm very proud for the fact that I was able to work with some of the best, you know, in US and in Europe. Uh, and because of this, Two side experience as a clinician, as a technician. Um, you know, 2007, eight, I started to develop a concept that I called digital smile design. Uh, that was basically at the beginning for me to improve my performance as a technician with my dentist. So I was tackling all the factors that were making us waste time, uh, repeat stuff, you know, redo. 
um, patients that were not completely happy. So I, I was challenging myself. I was challenging the status quo, uh, challenging the way we used to do stuff. And I started to create new strategies to try to do it better. Uh, this uh, kind of concept started to grow and I started to teach colleagues about this concept uh, of how to implement these ideas that will technically improve efficiency, performance, team communication, patient experience. Uh, I was lucky enough that at the time Facebook was starting and dentistry somehow embraced Facebook as their forum. Dentistry on the early days was very strong on Facebook. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but we just jumped in it. And I was one of the first guys to actually start using Facebook as my main platform. So as the concept digital smile design, DSD, uh, started to uh, happen, uh, it went viral on Facebook. And that brought me to the whole world from 2009 to 2015. I traveled around the world and I lectured for more than 100,000 colleagues about digital smile design. As 3D started in 2013, I jumped in and I brought 3D technology on board and translated the concept into 3D. Um, DSD grew in a way that I had to stop working as a dentist, as a technician. I founded a company, Digital Smile Design, and we started to serve dentists in different ways with education, uh, interdisciplinary planning center services, uh, lab services. We became a marketing agency, a consultancy company, and also a team uh, training uh, services. So nowadays, for the last few years, I've been running this company. We have more than 100 people on board now uh, working at the company, serving around 600, 800 dentists from all continents. Um, headquarters here in Madrid. I'm speaking exactly right now from Madrid, from our headquarters. So briefly, that's what I do. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you got to check it out. And so uh, if you guys aren't taking notes, we're taking notes for you. You can flip up to the link or you can flip up to the show notes and you're going to see links of everything Christian and I cover today. And I want you guys to check it out. And then Christian, talk about this. When you say the, the modern comprehensive mindset, Let's talk about that. What is it and why is it important? Because the future of dentistry belongs to the comprehensive thinkers. Uh, uh, we know dentistry is becoming uh, more and more competitive. Uh, things are changing drastically, everybody says, and that's true. We are going through a disruption in dentistry. Uh, Consumer behavior is changing. Uh, solutions for clinical execution are changing. And the corporate dental world is changing. Uh, so uh, dentists, they need to basically understand that there will be no room for average practice owners. You know, um, either you're going to become extremely special and different uh, or corporate dentists will take over whatever you're doing. So what I call the three-star Michelin restaurant idea, the three-star Michelin dental office idea. Um, it's exactly like in the restaurant business, you know, in the past, you know, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years ago, you had all these neighborhood uh, family restaurants that was pretty good and people would go there. And these are mainly gone since... Uh, chains of restaurants uh, that in the past were just cheap, bad food, they learned how to do very, very good, fancy food as well with a nice ambience, nice environment, nice experience. And they took over that whole middle part of the industry, uh, giving only space for the Michelin chefs to keep their freedom and keep their individuality and keep their business going. So as a practice owner, I believe that you need to make a choice. You know, you need to make a choice. Do you want to become a Michelin star dentist, right? Or do you want to just work for a corporation? And, and that's, that's no right or wrong, but that's what I see. And, and to become this, this unique, special place, 
the main change is related to this new comprehensive thinking process. You need to think comprehensively. Uh, you need to build a comprehensive team. You need to do comprehensive diagnosis. You need to document the patient in a comprehensive way. You need to improve your first appointment to become a comprehensive research about that human being sitting in front of you. You need, you need to expand your vision. We do what I call biased dentistry. Biased dentistry, that's 99.99999% of dentistry done is biased. What I mean with biased dentistry is a dentist that sees a patient on the first appointment and sees what they like the most and what they want to see. And human beings are not fragmented like that. You don't have an aligner patient. You don't have a veneer patient. You don't have an implant patient. You have a human being that on the first appointment deserves a comprehensive report, a comprehensive diagnosis, a comprehensive treatment plan, and afterwards understand exactly what they need. So it's comprehensive on that meaning, but it's also comprehensive on understanding the patient experience, the the how do you change people's priorities? How do you become special in people's imagination? How do you differentiate yourself? How do you create perceived value? The key is how do you position yourself? Positioning comprehensively. Position yourself as the comprehensive doctor in town. That is the short to success in the next 10 years. How can you position yourself, brand yourself, spread the word that you are the comprehensive dental practice in town? Of course, there's always ways to achieve success, but I can guarantee that this is a very smart way to guarantee success in this next decade. Yeah, I love it. And what's really cool is you've designed an entire system you know, how to think from the very beginning. And so even if you start the journey, every little step is going to make that happen in your practice. Um, I love the mindset thing. You know, I want you to speak about this because we have several people, several of our clients are in DST and they love it. You can feel the fire in their belly. You can see the excitement. And I always ask them like, how's it going? They're more excited than anything. You don't have to be a perfect dentist. You don't have to be the best dentist. It yeah, starts yeah. right here, don't you think? Yeah. So yeah, can you no, talk about that? that? that that's, I think you, you nailed it. That's why we start with the mindset. You know, uh, we can talk about fancy modern digital technologies. We can talk about fancy treatments, uh, sophisticated surgeries. We can talk about uh, uh, new tools to develop new things. But at the end of the day, you know, it starts with the mindset. Uh, you need to be, uh, you need to ignite this passion to challenge yourself. You need to reinvent yourself. You need to have enough motivation to say, okay, uh, I'm a good dentist. I'm doing okay. I'm happy with my work. I'm proud of my work, but that's not enough. I, I, I want to find a more meaningful way to do dentistry. And that's the second biggest word for me. A comprehensive mindset to deliver meaningful dentistry. Meaningful dentistry, meaning what we do, you know, it's already meaningful. Yes, every dentist doing a good job should be proud. But how can we become even more meaningful? Meaningful to ourselves, meaningful to our staff, meaningful to our patients. How can we go deeper? How can we become more vital? How can we make the real difference, right, in people's lives? You know, people say, okay, I did 10 veneers and my patient is smiling better and I made a difference in their life. Yes, you did. But could you make an even bigger difference? You know, how can you, you know, the 10 veneer, cute, superficial smile is great, but how can dentistry become more meaningful? You know, how can you really change long term somebody's life? And there's so many amazing things that a dental team can do to a patient, you know, in changing people's life and not be stuck with what I call camouflage dentistry, you know, superficial camouflage dentistry, not understanding the hidden problems, not understanding, uh, the real problems of the patient and, and not expanding our toolbox to really address what needs to be addressed. Uh, 
and and everything else starts to become you know uh, much more relevant in our life as a dentist and with this type of dentistry i believe you never get tired of the dentistry yeah i know that firsthand watching people we always say there are people that fix teeth and there are people that change lives it's not the same business and you could probably speak to this the bigger your practice gets the more energy and the more alignment you need with people, you know, cause a lot of people listen to this go, well, I have a, I have a six, I only have 16 members. Well, then you get to 16 team members. And then sometimes you might grow. It's even more important to establish that mm -hmm. mindset. And that's probably harder. Wouldn't you imagine to get everybody thinking the same way? That is one of the biggest bottlenecks that I see in this process of becoming a real comprehensive care provider is uh, building a comprehensive team and inspiring and motivating this comprehensive team. And that is basically leadership and communication skills. We don't learn that in dental school. Um, as I say, modern comprehensive dentistry is a team sport, different than dentistry in the recent past, you know? It's a team sport. Uh, when doctors come to me and say, I, uh, Christian, I, I'm a comprehensive dentist, I say, no, you're not, you know, because that doesn't exist. It exists our comprehensive teams. You may say, I'm a leader of, co of a comprehensive dental team, but by yourself, you cannot be a modern comprehensive dentist. The same way that you can be a digital dentist, There's, there are no digital dentists, there are digital teams comprehensive digital dentistry only exists with teamwork. And that's completely different than the way we did dentistry historically, where the dentist was doing everything. And so, of course, you had an assistant. You know, you, know, you would refer a patient to an orthodontist, but that's not modern teamwork. On the level of teamwork, what I'm talking about is when you see a super, super top sports team working together, right and delivering something together that's the type of work that we need to bring into dentistry to deliver this type of dentistry but once we start moving on that direction uh, we see so much we have to learn but it's so exciting it completely changed the mood and the energy of our everyday work yeah i love it i also love what you've done in evolving this concept and how you teach and you've had to you and i talked about this before we hit the go button you know the perception of what dsd was and what it is can you talk yeah. about that and how it's evolved and what it is today yeah so as i said you know since we did we were we did a pretty good job and maybe we were lucky here and there on spreading the word of DSD, you know, and nowadays, you know, every, you hear DSD all over. It's, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than my company. It, it, it's almost like a, a name that became something, you know, like uh, veneers, you know, you know, I do DSD, I did DSD, I'm going to use DSD. And, what what does that mean right what exactly that means it became uh, uh something that uh people have trouble and i understand explaining you know when somebody says do you know dsd and usually dentists they say yeah i know dsd and then you ask but what do you mean by it? that you know DSD? what is dsd and usually people have trouble explaining Some people you know have the perception that uh, DSD is a drawing of pictures, you know, because that's what we used to do 10 years ago. Some people think DSD is a software. Some people think DSD is a marketing strategy. Some people think that DSD is the mock-up or the smile test drive experience. Uh, um, some people think that DSD is a treatment planning approach. Um, um, some people think that DSD is a strategy for the staff. <laughs> Uh, and in fact, DSD is all of these things together, you know, the, it became a comprehensive philosophy of uh, how to run a modern dental practice. So you cannot explain the way you explain a software. Oh, DSD is a software to design smart. No, we, uh, 
to do DSD, you need all kinds of softwares and, and solutions, but it's not about the software, it's not about the digital, it's about this philosophy of how to run practice uh, using this modern concept of comprehensive care and unique patient experience. So DSD has basically two pillars, you know, uh, a comprehensive, comprehensive treatment planning and unique emotional patient experience. These are the two pillars of DSD, right? We believe that the strategies that we developed uh, utilizing all kinds of different tools and systems help doctors raise their bar when it comes to delivering better comprehensive dentistry, so better treatment planning and execution. So comprehensive treatment planning is pillar number one, but pillar number two is as important, and that is the patient experience, the perception of value, right? So pillar number one is how to deliver more value, and pillar number two is how to make people value that you're delivering more value. Because cool. <laughs> one thing is to be great, and the other thing is to be seen as great. Yeah. One thing is to be very good, the other thing is to make people value that you're very completely different completely different, you know? Um, so how, if you're going to invest on this very challenging journey of reinventing your practice to really move into comprehensive oral care, somebody has to pay for it. And the patient is the one that has to pay for it and to pay happily for it if they see the value. So that is the second part of it. And they need to come together. That's why I usually say, you know, I where we call DSD, where great dentistry meets great business, okay? So uh, it has to be great dentistry first because above all, we are ethical and we are focused on the patient. So uh, we love ideas that can allow us to deliver better dentistry, but at the same time, allow us to have a better business. Yeah. Um, not every strategy brings both, Unfortunately, many doctors out there are focusing on the business, not on the patient. We don't like that. We don't want that. But many doctors out there are doing their best on the dentistry and not necessarily getting the best on the business. So we love ideas and strategies that can bring these two worlds together where great dentistry meets great business. Yeah. What's really cool about that, those two pillars, there aren't a lot of teachers or influencers that put those two pillars together. And that was going to be my question. You probably get a lot of dentists that are, are embarking on a, they're actually going down a pretty good path. But the second pillar is the weakness for a lot of them, I would imagine, don't you think? Or not so much? Um, um, it's definitely something that we talk much less uh, we see that every dentist is doing great today, you know, and sometimes, unfortunately, even dentists that are not very good clinically are doing great. They're basically doing great business-wise because they're creating this unique experience and developing strategies to make people value what they do. And uh, you see, you know, on Instagram, or you, you hear about dentists that are making a lot of money because they're mastering the process of making people come to them and making people love what they do because it's very hard for patients to actually evaluate how good they are as a dentist. Patients will evaluate everything else and then re, you know, decide that they're a good dentist because of everything else, right? So... Um, but it's something that uh, the strategies are not probably that organized uh, in terms of how to create a five-star dental practice experience for the patients, how to create the three-star Michelin restaurant experience in a dental practice. Uh, but we see, you know, people talk more and more about that. But, you know, the other, the first pillar that may sound initially as the one under control is actually the one that is more not under control. The, uh, when it comes to comprehensive treatment planning, first, treatment planning is much more difficult than clinical execution. 
and our whole industry is biased towards clinical execution, meaning courses, congresses, lectures, books, articles, uh, R&D, software, technology, systems, techniques, uh, equipments, instruments, everything is driven to help dentists perform better dentistry. But our problem is not there. Our problem is before performing dentistry, is decision making, diagnosis and treatment planning. You know, when we know exactly what the patient needs, it's easy to perform, it's easier to perform. Yeah. So we see that all over the world where we can find many more great clinicians than great treatment planners. Uh, so, and, and this biased approach or this camouflage type of dentistry, you know, not really exploring dentistry as a whole. So that's the beauty. That's my passion. My yeah. passion is to, first of all, as a dental professional, to improve every day my vision as a comprehensive care provider. I work as a sponge, learning every single day from people on that direction, not on the clinical execution, yes, learning how to polish a corner better, learning how to do a surgery better, learning how to place the implant better, learning how to perform the aligner better, learning how to bond the veneer better, all of these things are good to be slightly better every single day, but my passion is on the beginning. Yeah. How do you improve diagnosis, documentation, team communication? It's basically decision-making. For me, the number one problem of dentistry by far is decision-making. Dentists all over the world, even the very good ones, are making poor decisions every day. We can make better decisions. We need better systems to make better decisions. And, and it's not standardized. Dentistry is very unprofessional when it comes to diagnosis and treatment planning, decision making. Yeah. There's no books about it. There's no, there's very few, there's very little know-how on standardization. And I usually say that may be why medicine doesn't take dentistry that serious, you know? Uh, that's maybe why if you send a patient to 10 different good dentists, you come back with 10 different diagnoses, 10 different treatment plans, 10 different estimates. That's how much room for improvement, you know, we have on this area. And our focus is how can you, what are the strategies that can help a dentist make consistent, better decisions when it comes to diagnosis and treatment planning? Yeah, go, I want you to go back to that because that is awesome. And wouldn't you agree, the more you do up front, the less you do later or the better you do later in dentistry? That's obvious, right? That's yeah. kind of in life. That's in everything that is engineering, that is in business, that is in marketing, that is in life, that is in dentistry. Our great Peter Dawson said, you know, that many, many times, if you know where you want to go, it's easy to get there, you know? Um, it's what I say. I say, you know, the quality of an outcome is only as good as the quality of the plan. There's, there's no magic. You cannot just poor planning, great outcome. Maybe once in a lifetime you get lucky, you know, once a year you get lucky, but the quality of the outcome of a treatment can only be as good as the quality of the plan. The C is planning. Planning means diagnostic, diagnosis, team communication, treatment planning, risk assessment, you know, pros and what, what are the options, making better decisions. So uh, you don't see that. You go to congresses, nobody yeah. talks about it. Everybody yeah. talks about the clinical execution. Very few talk about decision making. Right. You know, yeah. Comparing the options. Absolutely. Can I, I have so many questions I want to ask you. This could easily be a two hour show. So let's say, cause I hear this. I love what Christian talks about, but do I have to change everything in my office in order to do SD or is an additive philosophy? Like what's your thought on it's that? Up to you. It's up to you. We give insights that you can change Monday morning with one click. Very easy. You, you get a, you get a menu of things, right? And you can start, I, I tell people, it doesn't matter how much you change. It doesn't matter the speed of change. What matters is that you're moving. You have to move one step at a time, you know, don't be stuck. That's the beauty. You know, don't compare yourself. Don't feel like you're falling behind. No, 
is just about moving and enjoying the journey every day a little bit better. So, yes, if you want to build a clinic from scratch, 100% with this complete vision, you know, from digital dentistry, comprehensive dentistry, and patient experience, yes, we can sit down and build a project. That's what we do for many clinic owners. They say, look, I'm, I'm building one from scratch. I want to, you know, I want to hire the right people. I want to train the right people. I want to do the pl blueprint with the architect. I want to design the whole experience. I want to buy the right technology. Can we start from scratch ideally? Yes, we can. Is that possible? For 99.9% .9 of the people, no. So what you need to do is to create a transition strategy, a plan. I call it the five-year plan. You know, you build a five-year plan uh, where you, you, you create your vision first and then you reverse engineer your strategies and you create steps. You know, you go little by little without trauma, without disruption, without losing everything that you're doing that is already working, you know. You need to be smart about this transition. It's a process. It's a journey. You, you, you need to onboard your team. You need your team on your side. You need everybody sharing this vision with you. Everybody is excited about facing these challenges. And on the first month, you're just going to do this. You're going to change this little thing, and you're going to add that little thing, you know. And you, and you collect these early victories that will feed your energy and your motivation so the next month you can do the next step and then in six months you achieve certain improvements in one year a little bit more um and, and things you know, it's like that's life little by little yeah there's something you said that's really important there to feed your energy and your motivation so you might be listening yeah. to this and go well i already take a lot of education education is not so much for the knowledge it's to keep the fire lit it's some of you that are listening have two to three decades of practice in front of you and my question to you is how do you keep yourself so motivated that you go to work and you look forward to it you know because that's the challenge for all of us you got to you got to be excited about the road ahead don't you think christian you have to and and we know life is not easy dentistry is not easy uh, building a successful career is not easy but we cannot feel overwhelmed we need to keep the excitement the vision and the motivation everything starts with the vision right you need to have a vision for yourself uh, regardless if you're a, a young graduate if you just bought a practice or, or, or you're already uh, a mature practice owner or if you are already planning your exit strategy, it doesn't matter where you are. I love the idea of having a five-year plan. Yeah. So starting, starting with the question, where do you want to be in five years? That's for me the key. You close your eyes. You need to know where do you want to be. Even though we know that we may not get there, uh, never or not in five years, or we're going to get somewhere else, building these these plans, building the vision um, creates the energy to move, right? So uh, you, you have to have this vision, and that vision, the strategy is that don't create plans that are too overwhelming because you're not going to fulfill them in one month, three months. You're going to get mad at yourself and you're going to quit. It's exactly like we do when we say we're going to go to the gym and we're going to look amazing and this and that, you know, and people usually sabotage, we sabotage ourselves and, and we end up, you know, if, if, if we don't go for a while, we say, ah, that's not for me. Uh, I'm going to try to find an excuse and, and build my happier life without going to the gym. And yeah. that's, the, that's, that's who we are. So we, we try to, develop strategies where you can collect these early victories. I think the early victories are underrated. People don't talk enough about how to create strategies that allow people to almost have 100% guaranteed early victories, meaning the whole vision sounds very, very complex, and it is. But I'm going to suggest you to do this the first month and the second month and the third month. Oh, Christian, but that's too easy. This is too obvious. I'm almost already doing this. I say stick with that. 
right? Just do this. Make this become your new truth, your new reality, your new routine. Just focus on that. Forget about if it's too, no, don't worry if it's too easy. You're going to make it happen. In one month, you're going to feel like, I did it. Yeah. And that's it. Next month. And, and after three months, you're like, okay, I'm different than three months ago. Let's move to the next stage, you know. I love it. Go back to that. So I love the early victories. So as an educator, I'm sure you get these emails, you know, you get, and they may, they move, they warm your heart. You know, somebody that just started, like, give us an example. What, like some are, what are some of your favorite early victories that you just hear from dentists going through DSD that you go, Oh, I love hearing that. Of course that, um, you know, since we are emotional beings, uh, even though we think we are rational beings, we are emotional beings. Um, we love to see the emotional impact of what we do in people. Uh, so that's the reason why we developed this whole concept that we call emotional dentistry. And uh, some of the early strategies that we teach doctors is about the emotional smile test drive experience. Um, and usually, you know, doctors that start to implement this before anything else, you know, you don't need to buy anything, you don't need to. You, you just need to learn how to create this experience with your patient. And, not, and next month, you just need to choose two or three of your patients, you know, not try to do everything, this in every patient. And, and you do that once or twice. And then after one month, two months, you know, they usually call us back and say, this is super cool. You know, my, my assistant was motivated. You know, my front desk was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, the patient was so excited and emotional and everybody saw the emotion. And, uh, you know, so this for us is always very good because we know that this energy will create enough energy to make people continue to move and improve. I love it. I love it. Now, we're very grateful. You're going to come and do an entire DSD day. I, I made you do that. It's so fun. And so we're so super excited. So that's going to be in April. And I highly encourage you guys to check it out. You can go down to the show notes. But Christian, tell us what's going to happen during that day. Like, take a, if I come to DSD day, what am I going to learn? What are we going to do together? I think the DSD is focused on exactly what we mentioned about giving great insights to help people polish their vision of a five-year plan. So, you know, I'm going to start the day asking everybody, what is your five-year plan? What is your vision? Where do you want to be? If you close your eyes right now, maybe you need some work to be done to polish this vision, right? Uh, I, I hope that during the day, I'm going to share with people so many insights I love people to see the trends where the industry is going, um, to see opportunities, and people will be able to adapt these insights to their reality. And hopefully at the end of the day, they're going to close their eyes again and they're going to have an even better vision of where they want to be. Uh, and, and then start the process of creating strategies and prioritization of what are the next steps to start moving towards that vision. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. So there's so many things I want to cover. And today we, we probably just got to stay focused on the mindset because uh, there's elements yeah. and I'm going to have you back again and again and again. And I'm going to encourage all of you guys, if you're listening, you got to come to DSD day. There's a link down below. You can check it out. Uh, but Christian, any last thoughts on the modern, you know, comprehensive mindset? You know, I think that the key here is is to be humble, you know, to, to keep our beginner's mind. Everything, you know, I've been working with so many great clinicians. And I'm very proud of the work that I did with these great professionals, but there's so much room for improvement always. I believe that dentistry has to re we have to reinvent industry and we have the tools to do and we uh, to do that we need to put a little bit of aside everything that we are already very good at and just pretend for a moment that we are beginners 
as they call the beginner's mind, you know? And when you think as a beginner, you everything is possible. Yeah. Everything is needed, you know? Everything is available. Everything is an opportunity. It's like a blank canvas. And uh, it doesn't matter how great dentistry that we are doing is right now. I completely envision something much more powerful in 10 years. Right? And it's up to the ones that are willing to embrace this challenge and to make history during the next decade. Yeah. Well, you're doing it, brother. You're changing the world of dentistry and changing the lives of dentists everywhere. So I appreciate what you're doing, man. And it's just exciting to watch what you do. So, all right. Well, we'll stick around, Christian, just for a second while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for listening today to the Best Practice Show podcast. Hey, if you enjoyed today, do us a favor, hit the share button, share this with your friends, because nothing makes me happier than helping the rest of this great industry called dentistry, and uh, we couldn't be more excited. Make sure you come to DSD Day in Milwaukee, and I'm telling you, Christian brings it. It's going to be an incredible day. You'll leave extremely fired up uh, if you uh, if you check that out. Check out his website, which there's going to be a link below, and uh, anytime you get a chance to see him speak, you got to check it out. So, until we see you guys next time or you hear from the next time keep watching or keep listening to the best practices show you guys enjoy your day